Welcome to A Moment of Zen. Time to sit back and relax as model, actress, mentor, and supermom Zen Sams takes you on a sexy and wild ride covering the latest in film, fashion, pop culture, cryptocurrency, fintech, cannabis, and entertainment from the millennial mom's perspective. Here's your host, Zen Sams. Hello, my awesome tri-state area. Welcome to our 176th episode. It's always such a pleasure to spend my time with you on the airwaves. Thank you for listening and interacting with me on social media. That truly makes it all worthwhile. Please follow me at Zen Sams. That's Zen with an X, not a Z. And also remember that all episodes of A Moment of Zen stream 24-7 on Kathy Ireland's Your Home TV. And of course, you can always find us on our YouTube channel, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, threads, any way you want it. Up next in the Hydration with Heart segment sponsored by Once Upon a Coconut. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with the incredible and beautiful Jessica Markowski. She's a luxury real estate agent and leading cast member of Netflix's top series, Owning Manhattan. She joins me right here at headquarters today as we delve inside her inspiring life, chatting real estate, reality TV, and her hydration secrets. In the Discover Your Potential segment brought to you by Keep the Past, today we're joined by regular contributor Anna DeVere, and today she's joined by Kelly Roach, founder and CEO of Kelly Roach International. Kelly is a former NFL cheerleader turned Fortune 500 executive. They're going to join me to chat all about advice for entrepreneurs in changing economic times and finding the path to success. In the Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift, we're headed all the way to Nashville, scale 2024, where we'll be chatting with a few of our favorite skincare experts. We're featuring a board certified dermatologist, Dr. Merrick Elias and nurse practitioner, Heather Mangrum. We'll be chatting about the latest skincare trends, including CO2 lift for skin rejuvenation. In our entertainment and pop culture segment brought to you by Romulus Entertainment, today we're headed behind the scenes on the film set of Killing Castro starring Al Pacino. We're gonna be joined by actor Alexander Ludwig. Most of you know him from Vikings. We're chatting career, parenthood, and how he balances it all. Stay tuned for Jessica Markowski, star of Netflix's Owning Manhattan, coming up next. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. Discover the refreshing taste of 100% pure coconut water that actually tastes great. Naturally sweet with no artificial flavors or added sugar. It's packed with electrolytes to keep you hydrated throughout your day. And with 10% of profits going to charity, every sip makes a difference. Pure taste, pure goodness. Experience Nature's Gatorade. Visit Once Upon a Coconut or naturesgatorade.com. Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in the Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with the beautiful Jessica Markowski. She's a luxury real estate agent and leading cast member of Netflix's Owning Manhattan. She's born to Polish immigrants and raised in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. She's a native New Yorker with a tireless work ethic and a deep love for the city. Beyond her real estate career, she's built a substantial online following as a fashion influencer. And in her spare time, Jessica enjoys spending time with her fiance and her Cavapoo puppy, Romeo. Dear friends, join me now as we delve inside the inspiring life of Jessica Markowski chatting real estate, reality TV, and her hydration (laughs) secrets. Welcome to the show, Superstar. Ah, So nice to be here. It's my first time doing a live segment like this, so I'm excited. (laughs) Well, so excited to have you on. You're a seasoned professional. You've done not only media once, twice, but reality TV, and you've been a fashion model. Wow, what an incredible career. So, Jessica, I'm going to dive right in. So reality TV has a powerful impact on personal branding. In fact, a study by Forbes revealed that reality TV stars can see a 50% increase in their social media following and engagement within six months of a show airing. Now, how has your presence on 
owning Manhattan influenced your real estate business and personal brand? And more importantly, how has being on the show changed your life and your real estate career? Well, it took us 48 hours to hit top five. (laughs) So like my life has changed literally in 48 hours. The recognition, especially owning Manhattan, having such a big presence in New York City. I step on the subway, people know who I am. I step into Starbucks, people know who I am. So the recognition and Yeah, just solely the recognition that it's had here in New York City and around the world. Uh, You talk Poland, Israel, Canada. Like, I have so much fans coming up to me all the time um, because we've been out for probably around a month now. Like, just the recognition and the the effect that Netflix has had on our lives has been just instrumental to not only, like, fame, but also to business. Um, I'm generating so much business through this that I couldn't think less for Ryan for putting me on the show. Wow, that's such an incredible story. You are a trailblazer, and I'm so incredibly proud that, number one, you're a woman in this industry. Not easy to make it on multiple levels. You've trekked through. You're beautiful. That also works against you in our industry. But the fact that you're so committed and so talented, that's the driving force. And I think there's a lot of women listening to you right now looking up to you, seeing you as a role model, which brings me to skincare. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Jess, you know this better than anyone else. The global market value is is valued at over $140 billion, and that was back in 2020. So imagine what it is now, right, four years later. We don't have the stats yet, but I'm sure they're out there. Now, in such a competitive space, personal endorsements from influencers like yourself can sway A lot of consumer choices significantly. As someone who is constantly in the public eye, how do you keep your skin looking so flawless? I mean, are there any special products or routines that you swear by? Yeah, so it all stems to the way I was raised. Um, My grandma, when she came to America with my mom, they always used Nivea. It's my hidden little secret. I think it's such a great product and I exfoliate every single day, Um, but it's so important to moisturize your skin. And Nivea is my best friend when it comes to skincare. <laughs> I hear you. They have yeah. that in Greece. And my grandmother, who's Greek, I, she grew up. That yeah, was the answer know. to everything. Got a skin burn? Nivea. Yes. You, your skin is dry? Nivea. Yes. <laughs> whatever, whatever ailment we had skin-wise, that yeah. little blue jug with yes. the white letters yes. was always there. I hear you. I still use it. Same, yes. same. Guilty, guilty. And also for, like, removing makeup. It's great, yeah. too. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm thicking through Nivea Girl. <laughs> All right, there you go. Now, coconut water, we're going to yes. shift a bit, has yes. become a popular health trend mm-hmm. with the market expected to reach like close to $10 billion this year alone. Mm-hmm. And it's known for its hydrating properties. It's a favorite among celebrities and athletes. Now, coconut water, more importantly, if we get into it, has a lot of hydration benefits. But how has it become a part of your daily wellness routine, especially, especially during those either long filming days or, or showing, you know, apartment to apartment? Sure. So I had a rude awakening this year that my doctor said I don't drink enough water um, because I'm not a kind of girl that loves and reaches out for a water bottle. So my best choice is to drink coconut water. Um, It always reminds me to stay hydrated, um, not only for skin, but for fueling your body. Um, It's important to eat, but also to remind yourself that whether it's water or coconut water, it's so important to have those electrolytes that I'm very thankful for through coconut water. Um, I just had a rude awakening. So it's like, oh, water is like my best friend to get me through the crazy days of showings, running around uh, New York City, thick and through all the time. Um, Water is something that we all need to remind ourselves that we need to stay hydrated. Yeah, and I love that you said electrolyte replacement. Mm-hmm. It's That's key. One can yes. of coconut water has close to 400 milligrams, which is what the equivalent of like three bananas. Who's eating three bananas in a row? Mommy. Now, reality <laughs> TV. Yeah, me, me, me either. <laughs> reality TV often reveals un, unexpected facets of one's personality. Interestingly enough, according to a survey by the Journal of Broadcasting and Electronic Media, 63% of reality TV participants report learning new things about themselves. Mm -hmm. What's the most surprising thing you've learned about yourself throughout this reality TV journey? Yeah, you know, I never did a reality TV show before, so I'm more amateur compared to, you know, people who have done this before. I think doing a reality TV show, it like reminds me to stay true to who I am. Um, you know, cause sometimes you're pressured or you don't think about things, but I think going forward in season two, I really want to always like set a reminder to myself, like, would I say this? Do I stand by that? 
Um, who am I as a person? Um, it's very important when it comes to doing reality TV. Wow. I, I, you definitely have a passion for this, to have the patience for this. <laughs> now, Manhattan's luxury real estate market is one of the most competitive in the world, with the average price per square foot well exceeding $1,800, and people think that that's even high. Uh, but in fact, for us, it's normal. Amidst this glamour, there are always memorable moments, I have to say, without a doubt. You show some of the most luxurious properties in Manhattan. Do you have any funny or memorable stories from your time on on the reality TV show Owning Manhattan? Um, I think the most memorable moment for me was the shot that, I don't remember which episode it was, but the shot where we were at the Huron, a new development that we represent over at Sirhan, where I put on you know, our, our cap to protect ourselves, and then we spoke in our native language to really sell to our clientele. And because I grew up in the neighborhood where the Huron is located, which is in Greenpoint, and being able to speak in my native language, which is Polish, it was like that full circle moment of, wow, I grew up here. I'm selling this beautiful new development that we have. And also speaking my native language, it was a full circle moment for me that I was like, oh, my God, is this real? Is this actually happening? Um, that was a very, to the core, most important moment for me. Yeah, because at that point, it's mom and grandma that are proud yes. of you. And that yes. makes the difference, right? Yeah, because you're not only selling real estate, but I'm selling it in my native language. So my parents get to see that I'm like speaking and, you know, thank and you to Polish school. you're a well-respected school. professional. Yeah, and yes, yeah, I so love it. It was cool. It was cool. Now, stress management is crucial for high-achieving professionals like yourself. Mm -hmm. American Psychological Association found that 75% of adults experience moderate to high levels of stress. And come on, like, who doesn't experience stress? The city alone, walking out of your apartment or your condo stresses you. <laughs> so balancing a thriving real estate career and a popular reality TV show must be quite hectic, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. How do you manage stress? How do you how do you ensure you stay hydrated and healthy? You know, I'm forever thankful for having a fiance who has a master's in psychology from Harvard. <laughs> so that helps for sure. Um, he gears me in all the right directions and having a good support system, whether it's your significant other and family and, you know, co-workers to get you through those crazy hectic days that we don't really showcase so much on social media. But, you know, there are moments, Jordana knows, I cried two days ago, but, you know, there are moments where we experience, you know, we could, the good, bad, ugly, as they say in the trailer. Um, but the way I stay, stay intact with who I am is having the best support system and to stay hydrated and eat. Um, those it. are my secret sauces. Now let's shift to pets. Mm -hmm. Now pets definitely reduce stress levels. Yeah. I got a little guy, Elvis, at home oh, on what my kind own. Of dog do you He's have? a Shih Tzu. Oh. And studies show that spending time with your pets lowers cortisol levels and increases the the, the feelings of happiness, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. So we hear you have a cute cavapoo yes. named Romeo. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> how, did you, how, do, how do you find time to relax and, and charge him with with so much with your busy fiance and your schedule like yeah. how do you tend to little guy i honestly like the best investment i could have ever chosen throughout like filming the show so we got romeo right before filming and he was like my little like comfort baby on days where i was just filming so much and just coming home to this like precious little angel who has like no nothing but love to give to you um i I just love Romeo so much. <laughs> I can Very tell. For him. I can hear it in your voice. Yeah, yeah. Viewers love behind the scenes insights. Yeah. So can you can you give us a sneak peek into any upcoming episodes uh, or even any projects outside of this that you're that you're excited about? Maybe sure. a little bit of gossip or behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah. So I'm avoiding gossip, <laughs> but I'm very excited. I have a new townhouse on that Upper East Side right now. I have a new Tribeca listing coming up in two weeks. I would say. Um, on Washington Street. I'm really excited about that. Um, you know, there's projects coming in nonstop every single day just because of virtue just doing the show. Um, so forever happy and, you know, go, go, go. That's New York City for you. You're constantly doing something new and fresh every day. I have a new opportunity, all thanks to the show. Um, so, yeah, you know, got to stay tuned. Hopefully we'll have a season two. I have and advise everyone to watch Owning Manhattan on Netflix right now because the more viewers we have now will give us 
the big push to do season two. So everyone go watch it. Yeah, now. season one was highly anticipated <laughs> yeah. and it's freshly out. So yeah. definitely head to uh, to check Owning Manhattan out. Can't wait to check you out in season two. Thank you so much, Jessica, for sharing yeah. your insight and experiences with us today. You were so transparent. Love chatting with you. You're even more beautiful in person than you are online. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to be here with you. Do check out Jessica directly on the gram at Jessica Markowski. That was our Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. You're listening to a moment of zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A moment of zen is brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. Discover the refreshing taste of 100% pure coconut water that actually tastes great. Naturally sweet with no artificial flavors or added sugar. It's packed with electrolytes to keep you hydrated throughout your day. And with 10% of profits going to charity, every sip makes a difference. Pure taste, pure goodness. Experience Nature's Gatorade. Visit Once Upon a Coconut or naturesgatorade.com. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Your Home TV with Kathy Ireland and their channel partners. Head to yourhometv.com for free, family-friendly programming, streaming 24-7. The Kelly Williams Show is brought to you by Serendipity Yacht Cruises and Events. Tune in and turn on your happy. Kelly Williams is full of energy and incredible guests. Watch her anytime, free programming on your home TV network, and do follow her on social media for a chance to win monthly prizes. Check out The Kelly Williams Show on yourhometv.com. Tune in to A Moment of Zen, Saturday nights from 9 to 10 p.m. on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, IHAR Radio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in the Discover Your Potential segment brought to you by Keep the Past, we're joined by contributor, podcaster, and regular co-host, Anna DeVere. Today, she's joined by Kelly Roach, founder and CEO of Kelly Roach International. NFL cheerleader turned Fortune 500 executive. Kelly is one of the only female founders in the online space to build her company from zero to eight figures with zero debt, investors, or outside funding. Today, she continues to empower thousands around the globe to achieve financial and lifestyle freedom through entrepreneurship. Impressively, she's also a multi-international best-selling author, top 20 podcast host and philanthropist who has been featured on major media platforms such as ABC, NBC, Fox, and Forbes. They join me today to chat all about advice for entrepreneurs in changing economic times and finding the path to success. Welcoming now to the show are Kelly Roach and Anna DeVere. Welcome, superstars. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. So let's dive right in. Now, before starting your own company, Kelly, I know you spent years in corporate America raising uh, through the ranks of a Fortune 500 company and, and even led a team of over 100 to record breaking sales during the economic downturn back in 2008 to 2010. So without a doubt, it's clear that you're good at what you do. But can you share a little bit more about your background and what really inspired you to leave such a successful corporate career to become a business strategist and coach? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it really comes down to wanting to take my skills and my passion and do work that I felt was really going to have a more meaningful impact on the everyday lives of families uh, around the world. And so that's why I'm so passionate about helping entrepreneurs really create generational wealth and make an impact by doing work that they love. I was very lucky to have a great Fortune 500 career, uh, but I really wanted to transition into helping the little guys, helping small businesses become big businesses, right? By getting the tools and the strategies and the mindset that they needed to do that. That's amazing. It always comes full circle. And I know you've built a well-known track record with your firm, creating six, seven, and even eight figure client success. That's amazing. Not to mention that you've been the recipient of prestigious awards, such as the number 287 on the INC 5000 list, the Stevie Awards, Woman of the Year, Titan C. I mean, the list goes on and on. So I'm certainly impressed and I admire how you've dedicated yourself to passing your knowledge on to others through your coaching career because mentorship is truly key, truly. In fact, as of March of this year, 98% of US Fortune 500 companies have, a, have and provide mentoring programs and mentees are five times more likely to get promoted compared to their peers. So it's clear finding a proper mentor is key to achieving success. And for many, you are that mentor. Now I know Anna has some questions, but Kelly, congratulations on everything you've accomplished. Thank you. 
Well, I just wanted to, you know, ask you because that success speaks for itself. But do you have any personal mantra or philosophy, a guide that guides you through challenging times? And if so, how did you develop that? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me is I encourage everyone to find their vocation in life because whatever path you choose, you're going to run into a lot of hardships. You're going to have obstacles. You're going to have high highs and low lows. And I always say, like, even if you're a champion, your success is 1% of the time. So 99% of the time you feel like you're failing. 99% of the time you're going through the hard times. And so find the thing that is your vocation where you're not waking up every day and relying on motivation, but instead you feel like you're answering your calling. And I think when you do that, you're able to weather the storms and the highs and the lows much better over the long term. That's Thank a great you. perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you have the number one ranked marketing podcast, The mm -hmm. Kelly Roach Show, and I saw one episode titled From Downturn to Upswing, yeah. Tactical Advice for Entrepreneurs Facing Economic Instability, which really intrigued me, and I know many can relate. Can you share with us a key takeaway from that show that you think struggling entrepreneurs could benefit from? Yeah, I would recommend that everyone who hears this show go and listen to that episode on The Kelly Roach Show because it's going to be a critical tool in your tool belt as we kind of proceed through what is coming and what's already here. And I would say a couple of the things that I share on the show are, you know, how to be nimble in your business, how to be able to uh, pivot strategically versus panic, which then ends up actually having the reverse effect and also how to capitalize on the opportunity because even when you're in an economic downturn and when challenges present itself, a lot of people are finding that their sales are slower. Uh, they're having a hard time retaining customers. Maybe people are struggling to pay their bills that they owe you. There is also opportunity in that. And in the show, I kind of walk you through the thinking behind what does innovation look like and how do you find the pockets to capitalize on so that you can can in fact thrive even when the economy is in a downturn. Well, that's amazing. I I can't wait to listen to that episode in full. Um, and thanks for directing people there. Um, I want to ask you about millionaire mornings, though. Yeah. What advice would you give basically anyone who wants to play a bigger game? Yeah, well, you know, I am a big fan of the thinking that everyone needs to follow the routine that's right for them. I really try not to prescribe a morning routine or a suggested format that people need to follow because what might be great for me could be a horrible idea for someone else. But what I would say is, you know, your health is your wealth. And the more that you focus on getting, you know, seven, eight hours of sleep, drinking lots of water, uh, feeding your body fuel versus eating for entertainment, uh, just those basic foundations of health. Um, and your morning routine obviously plays into that. You know, you're optimizing your body so that your body and your mind can perform at a high level for you. And so I think just one of the big things that I've seen in the entrepreneurial space is a lot of people compromise their health in pursuit of their wealth, and then they end up losing their wealth because their health is compromised. And so just having a, a really counter mindset, I think is very important, understanding that the more that you optimize uh, your mind and your body, the faster and the more sustainably you're going to be able to grow. Mm, thank you. Profound. That's <laughs> true. I was like lost in my thoughts. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Now, now, I would be remiss, Kelly, not to touch on artificial intel intelligence as the AI market is projected to reach a staggering $407 billion by the year 2027. And according to a, a Forbes advisor survey, 64% of businesses believe that AI will help increase their overall productivity. Now, with this in mind, how do you envision the future of work particularly in the coaching and consulting industry? How do you see it evolving over the next decade? And I'm also curious, how do you see emerging technologies like AI and automation reshaping the landscape of business coaching? Yeah, well, it's it's reshaping a lot of things already. And I think a lot of people were kind of quick to jump the gun on installing too much AI in their businesses too quickly. And a lot of people are struggling because of that right now. Um, AI has not... 
uh, develop to the point of reliability in certain human-centered relationship building tasks yet. And so especially if you are in a service industry, coaching, consulting, something that uh, relies on human delivery, your kind of uh, ace in the hole is relationships. And 70% of people that were surveyed at the beginning of this year said, I want a relationship with my service provider. So I would think about AI from the standpoint of how can you leverage AI for re repetitive tasks and backend things that don't take away from the relationship, but instead enhance and accelerate the productivity of the business? And how do you really focus on the human centricity of the relationships that you're building with the people that you're here to serve? I think that balance, it's like everything in moderation approach is, is a really good line of thinking right now. Wow. Oh, I love your tips and I love that you're accessible through the Kelly Roach show. So I want to ask you about a particular show that jumped out at me um, called Opportunity and Mental Load, Just Trying to Get By. I think that's probably something that people can relate to. Can you dive into that just that little bit? Yeah. I mean, I've been really fascinated with the entrepreneurial world, you know, coming from corporate and, and coming from understanding building teams and hierarchy of leadership and, you know, all of those things. And a lot of times people have only bad things to say about corporations when it comes to that. But the truth is they really do understand optimization of business. And that's why so many uh, corporations are, you know, multi-billion dollar companies while the average small business owner is taking home less than $50,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I see that that burnout is definitely um, prevalent across business leaders. And a lot of the time uh, when someone is suffering from burnout, they don't have the leverage in their business with systems and people that is required for scale. And so really they're carrying the weight of the business on their shoulders. And for most people, it's simply not sustainable. And there's no joy and fulfillment in that, right? What we mm -hmm. want to do is we want to help people put systems and team in the right places and, and in the right sp spaces in the business so that the business owner can actually narrow their focus and really operate in their zone of genius so that the business can keep running functionally without it requiring them to have their hands in every aspect of the business. I can relate. That certainly is a, a, a big mistake. Yeah. And now piggybacking on business, let's chat about work-life balance. Yeah. So last year, about 75% of U.S. workers believed a healthy work-life balance was crucial, yet 60% said they didn't have boundaries mm -hmm. between work responsibilities and their personal life. And this lack of balance can result in burnout and sleep issues and decline mental health. We know that even illness. So while it may look slightly different for everyone, it's incredibly important to find the balance that works best for you. Now, Kelly, can you share how you maintain a balance between your professional and your personal life? I, I'm sure it's not an easy task. Yeah, it is not an easy task. I have six companies now. I have a 10-year-old daughter, a husband, dog, the whole thing. So it's 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 a crazy life, right? And I say it's it's not balance as much it is prioritization, right? You have to know what your priorities are and you have to be ruthless about them. And if you know what your priorities are, then you can make decisions. For me, a lot of times if I'm having special family time or I'm going out with my family or doing something with my daughter, I'll turn my phone off. I'll, I'll leave it home when we're going out together because I know I run my business from my phone. So that's a 24 seven news cycle. It's never going to stop. Right. And so you just have to find those little things that are going to work for you that make make it work for your lifestyle. For me also as a business owner, I actually have benefited a lot from the fact that we can do business from our phones and be so mobile and on the go because it gives me a ton more freedom and flexibility. So while on the bad side, it may feel like there's no boundaries, on the good side, it actually gives you way more flexibility and freedom. I mean, I remember the days of getting up in the morning and driving into the office and you're just there until evening, right? And I remember eating dinner at the office, not getting home until seven o'clock at night and there was no flexibility, right? Because you just had to stay until the work was done. Now being able to work on our phones, we can hit pause. We can go have dinner with our families. We can go do things with our children or pets or, you know, whatever our life priorities are and, and then, you know, dip back in when we need to. But even little things like, you know, le letting your phone be outside the room when you sleep or, um, you know, just giving yourself an hour that you're not going to be on the phone before you go to sleep. It's figuring out what's going to work for you. Mm, great advice. Kelly, I want to thank you personally for, for diversifying your offerings. I know you've talked about giving people three times the value 
for free of what they've paid for in the past. I know that's your part of your legacy. And I am definitely checking out virtual business school. I'm glad we chatted about that pre-episode. Yes, thank you. And I'm just wondering what kind of a legacy do you hope to leave behind personally, professionally? How are you working towards that? Yeah, I mean, I think the ultimate reward in life is contribution, right? And so for me, like I did the corporate ladder, I built the eight figure business, I pursued a lot of those kind of external goals. And, you know, now for me in life, it's really about leaving a lasting legacy of impact and contribution. And that's kind of the core focus of everything that I do. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow, you you are so inspirational. You are quite a trailblazer. And (laughs) Thank and you. more importantly, you know, many women are looking up to you and you fit the perfect mold for millennial mom here. You are it. Aww, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on our show, Kelly and Anna. Thank you so much for introducing us to such a great guest. Yes, of course. It was an honor to be here. Thank you so much. That was Discover Your Potential segment brought to you by Keep the Past. And that was the incredible Kelly Roach, founder and CEO of Kelly Roach International. Definitely be sure to check her out online at kellyroachinternational.com and on the gram at Kelly Roach Official. And of course, to see more of our incredible Anna, head to discoveryourpotentialshow.com. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A moment of Zen is brought to you by Your Home TV with Kathy Ireland and their channel partners. Head to yourhometv.com for free, family friendly programming, streaming 24 7. Do you have the dream of starting and owning your own business or know of someone who does? If so, check out Your Home Business Program, where they inspire, equip, and encourage those who dream of owning and operating their own business. Check out Your Home Business on yourhometv.com. Tune in to A Moment of Zen, Saturday nights from 9 to 10 p.m. on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by CO2 Lift. As we age, our skin loses moisture and elasticity, causing wrinkled skin. You can reverse this aging process with CO2 Lift. CO2 Lift utilizes the powerful benefits of carbon dioxide to lift, tighten, and regenerate your skin. This simple, painless at home carboxy therapy treatment is scientifically proven to reverse the aging process. You will see reduction in wrinkles, increase in luminosity, and improve pigmentation, sagging, skin tone, and radiance. For more information or to order CO2 Lift, ask your skincare professional professional or go to co2lift.com. Welcome back, my beautiful tri-state area. This is your favorite iHeartRadio host, Zen Sams for 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. And today I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, covering Music Scale 2024. And I'm with Dr. Merrick Elias, who is a top-notch dermatologist in the South Florida area. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So Scale 2024. What are the top trends? What are people talking about? What have you noticed? So I'm, first of all, I've noticed a ton of great people out here learning from all the different specialties and areas involved with dermatology and aesthetic medicine, uh, making new friends, meeting people, and everybody is learning about the newest trends of which the CO2 lift is one of those trends. Yes, yeah, CO2 lift is a trend that is not per se new, right? It's been around since the 1930s. Back then, they used to inject it into the face. The method of delivery, to my understanding, has changed since then. It's The delivery system is in a gel-like format, delivered cutaneously 45 minutes uh, on the face or the area of the body that you're treating. As a dermatologist, have you personally used the mask? Yes, I have, and it's wonderful. And what's the first thing you notice when you put it on your skin? I just noticed that I actually relax. Usually we're doing this post-procedure as an adjunct treatment, post-Fraxel or other lasers, clear and brilliant. I don't want to name drop too many other companies, but um, it works fantastic after that. Or as a standalone, as a refresh, um, it's a great rejuvenating treatment. So great aesthetic monotherapy. It's great in combo therapy. I know that the use cases for CO2 lift are widespread. It's 117% increase in hydration and elasticity after just one application, which makes it something very Googleable, bringing me to, it was the top three Google search of Q3 of 2023. Everybody wanted to know what this product was about. And here we go. We have CO2 lift that delivered that. Um, talk to me about what your patients are reacting uh, to about the product. So the great thing as a, as a practice owner is this helps bring people back to your practice for other touch points. This is such a wonderful treatment. Patients love the way it feels. They love the 
just the rejuvenation of the glow up afterwards. It just levels up all their treatments and it keeps you connected because the same patient may come in for toxin or for filler or for laser, but we're also medical dermatologists. So just bringing them back off and off gives us the opportunity to see them for a skin cancer check or to treat their child for acne. So it's a wonderful product for many reasons. Now let's chat about how you came across this product because to my understanding, it's quite serendipitous. So tell me about how you first learned about CO2 Lift. So uh, this is an interesting story. I was going to a conference, I believe it was the American Academy of Dermatology in 2022 or 23. And I'm at the airport and just waiting for my delayed flight. And this very lovely lady sitting across from me and she had to go to the bathroom. And she says to me, do you mind holding, watching my stuff? You look like a nice enough guy. <laughs> like you're not going to steal my stuff. And I was like, okay, sure. Like, what do, you, what do you do? Like, what are you here for? And we started talking and I was like, I'm a dermatologist. I live in South Florida, uh, originally from New York. Let's go Rangers. And <laughs> let's go Rangers. And she said, oh, I live in Weston, which is a town not too far from where I live. And I'm the owner of a company called CO2 Left. And we just started talking. And then she invited me to come to the booth and to you know learn. She stopped, she's been by my office to train my staff. And just a wonderful product. It was very serendipitous how it happened. And here we are today seeing how the growth of this product, how it's so highly searched on Google, it touches me that I was knowing about something before it became cool, before it became popular, and how great this product really is. And, you know, there's a secondary line in there called the CO2 lift uh, a vaginal. Yeah. So um, we do um, use that in our patients as well. Um, and it works very well in combination or monotherapy. Um, we see a lot of moms, mommy makeovers that are in for body sculpting procedures. And this works as a great product to go along with that. It's an added value. It sure is. It sure is. And the beautiful part about this product is that it's non-invasive. It's sustainable. And the founder, Lana Kerr, who is the face of the company, is absolutely beautiful inside and out. You guys could research the product, CO2Lift.com. Not just saying that because, of course, I love Lana. She's a dear friend. You met her, and, and she's, she's salt of the earth. The product speaks for itself. And they would not have the success that they do if the results were not there. So clinically proven, clinically verified. We have Dr. Michelle Henry, who's endorsed the product, Dr. Serrania Wilds from the Mayo Clinic, Dr. Merrick, Dr. Gold, Dr. Beisman. The list goes on and on. Absolutely. And, and one last little plug for Lana. Follow her blog. It's, it's fantastic. You'll learn a lot. You'll have, be able to connect directly with her and many of us that are online if there's questions about the use of this product or what, where it can fit into your practice. Well, thank you so much for a great interview, Dr. Merrick. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks for having us. Have a great rest of the conference. I am Heather Mangrum. I am a nurse practitioner. I own a med spa just a little west here of Nashville, Derma, uh, Derma Dixon, a med spa. Um, we have used CO2 mask in our office for a, about a year now and love it. So I was excited to actually sit down and get it done myself today. So she uses CO2 lift in her practice pre and post treatments to my understanding. Now, for those of you that have never heard of carbon dioxide therapy for skin rejuvenation, let me give you the lowdown. This has been around since the 1930s. In the 1930s, they used to inject it into the skin, which made it a little bit difficult for just the average person to, you know, get this procedure done. There was needles involved. It was painful. But today, 2024, we have a new system and it's called CO2 Lift. And these products are a gel-like format you mix two compounds together, 45 minutes delivered cutaneously in the comfort of your own home. And that's what we're talking about today. So let's talk about the science of carbon dioxide therapy. To your understanding, why is this so effective and so immediate? It's given that hydration and oxidation right to the source of the skin. It's able to absorb very well. We even use it uh, pre-treatments. Uh, we'll put the numbing on for our Morpheus treatments in the office and then apply that and allow the absorptions to work even better. And then post-procedures of microneedling, Morpheus, or patients use it at home without even um, having a procedure to give that hydration. Right. So there's CO2 Lift and CO2 Lift Pro, mm -hmm. and the Pro is only available at a practitioner's office or your doctor's office. Now, the talk to me a little bit about the use cases outside of skin rejuvenation for the face that you have heard of CO2 lift being a great use case for. 
So personally, uh, we have used this with even my 16 year old daughter has pretty severe eczema. And when I started seeing all the cases that were using it for healing and rejuvenation, but that healing side with my daughter's inflammations and drynesses of her eczemas, we have started using that for her um, as well. And when she has flare ups or now with even patients, it is a go-to for us for that healing property. So it's been amazing. Yeah, she said it. There you have it. CO2 lift, many use cases. I thank you so much for coming on today. And by the way, your face is glowing. Did you just do a mask? Ha I, yes, I just had a mask and then uh, had makeup applications done here. So it's been amazing. Well, this is why your skin looks so refreshed. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by CO2 Lift. As we age, our skin loses moisture and elasticity, causing wrinkled skin. You can reverse this aging process with CO2 Lift. CO2 Lift utilizes the powerful benefits of carbon dioxide to lift, tighten, and regenerate your skin. This simple, painless at home carboxy therapy treatment is scientifically proven to reverse the aging process. You will see reduction in wrinkles, increase in luminosity, and improve pigmentation, sagging, skin tone, and radiance. For more information or to order CO2 Lift, ask your skincare professional professional or go to co2lift.com. A Moment of Zen is sponsored by Fintech TV. Fintech TV, the newest streaming channel focused exclusively on the business of blockchain, digital assets, and sustainability. Broadcasting from our studio on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with daily reports from NASDAQ, global expansion, and 24-7 coverage. Become part of the launch. Head to fintech.tv slash invest. Fintech.tv slash invest. Tune in to A Moment of Zen, Saturday nights from 9 to 10 p.m. on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, iHeart Radio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our entertainment and pop culture segment brought to you by Romulus Entertainment. Today, we're headed behind the scenes on the film set of Killing Castro starring Al Pacino. We're going to be joined by actor Alexander Ludwig. Most of you know him from Vikings. We're chatting career, parenthood, and how he balances it all. Alexander, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for having me. Okay, this is so exciting. The strike ends and you are back to work pronto. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Well, yeah. we are thanking Romulus Entertainment for that, for getting, <laughs> for getting actors back up to work very quickly. Yeah. So you in this particular movie play um, Agent Murphy. Yeah. Tell me what it was like when you first read the script what attracted you to the part and did you know right away that you were doing this uh, interestingly enough i i was actually in spain when i got uh, sent this and i and i remember just thinking like i as an actor i we all have i think certain things that we gravitate towards for me i love period pieces i always have uh, it's something about just um, being transported into another time and as actors we're so lucky i feel like we get to live so many lives um, at least do our best at experiencing what that would have been like. So when I read the title, I, I immediately knew that this was going to be something that I was going to like, and immediately it was just like, please, please let this be good. Um, and I was so fascinated by, uh, I mean, 1960s to me is, has always been a really fascinating time, um, you know, in pop culture, but uh, in America especially, uh, and especially in New York. So um, I love that whole aspect of it, and I knew that, I wanted to be a part of an ensemble piece like this. Right. And what's very interesting, you know, when you when you look back at the history and the timeline and being attracted to period pieces, this is an untold story. And it's a yeah. it's based on true events. Uh, the very first time that Fidel Castro meets Malcolm X yeah. uh, in here, right here in New York City and the dynamic between the two of them and that relationship is such an interesting story to be t that 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 they're telling on this film set, but more importantly, Killing Castro. Let's talk about the title. Hmm. If you look in history, there were many attempts on Fidel Castro's life, hmm. specifically in 1960, not only by the U.S. government, by the mafia, the CIA, pretty much everyone out there. What kind of story are you looking to convey through Agent Murphy? Every once in a while, you get sent something that um, is bigger than just your character. You know, so for me, um, Agent Murphy is, you know, this 
uh, rambunctious FBI agent um, who's, who's more green than, say, his partner, Agent Collins, um, and is looking to, to be a part of something important. Um, and sometimes I think he lets his, uh, uh, his ego get the best of him. Uh, but for me, th there's a great arc I in his character. But more importantly, um, every once in a while you get sent a project where you say, you know, in, in any way, shape, or form, I want to be a part of this project because I think that um, it's going to mean something to people and it's going to mean something to the, to the world. And again, these movies are so seldom made now that I wanted to in any way be a part of it. So they sent me the offer and immediately I was just like, yep, this is, um, this is great. Um, and it's honestly just so great to be back at work because I love what I do. Um, and getting to work with Ron has been amazing. They've got a really good banter uh, throughout the film. So um, as much as I love bringing Murphy to life, um, I love even more bringing the story to life. That was a hallmark moment, Alex. <laughs> you said that perfectly. And, and I love it that the character spoke to you that if, if it evokes emotion in the actor reading it, then you're definitely going to evoke emotion when you perform it and the audience will respond. Now, interestingly enough, and this is a question that I ask all actors, if you had to play the same role, Agent Murphy, but not period piece in current times, would you, and how would you adjust? That's a good question. Um, I mean, knowing what I know now without giving too much away, um, I don't know if there is too much adjustment to him because, it, you know, it's funny, I was, I was um, proposed with the same question myself when I did Vikings. And, you know, one thing we loved to do on that show was that we found places to put comedy in the show, which sounds very strange because immediately you're like, well, they're Vikings and they're supposed to be these, you know, um, raiders and, you know, they, they pillage these different places. Aren't they supposed to be like Vikings? And I think that's, that's the trap is that you think that when you're playing an FBI agent or if you're playing a Viking, that, that you have a caricature of what they're supposed to be like. The truth is that they're human. Right. And whether or not Murphy was in the 60s or he was, he was alive now, I think he would still be the ambitious, um, uh, you know, hysterical kind of um, uh, rambunctious character that he is uh, in, in both, in both uh, scenarios. Yeah. I love the consistency of your emotional connection to him. And that yeah. you didn't change him, even if I proposed he was, you know, acting, yeah. seven, you know, 50 years into the future. Now, um, what's interesting is when you prepare as an actor, you know, you receive the script, you know the, the story you're telling, you know the story everyone's telling because you need to know everybody's story, not just your own. Yeah. And it brings me back to preparation. So method acting, Meisner technique, all of these techniques that we as actors apply on a, on a daily level when we're faced with, you know, dissecting a role and coming and showing up to work prompt. What is it that, what kind of research uh, did you do to have to prepare for a role like this? So I work with a coach named Ivana Chubik and uh, I absolutely love her. And we work on every sentence together for everything I do. Um, one thing that you learn when you're in this business is that there's no right way to do it. Um, and, you know, I always try to tell people who want to be in this business or anything, like, we're not athletes. This is not a competitive sport. Um, you know, everybody has their own way of doing things, and you got to find what works best for you. Um, for me, I have a very specific way I break down every script I do. Um, so um, I've already prepped this entire movie. Uh, and I've only shot three days, right. you know, but, but we've already done all that work so that now I can come here and be completely free. Um, what Ivana has done, um, she has a book called The Power of the Actor, if anybody's interested. Uh, I totally recommend reading it. Um, and she's worked with incredible talent. Um, it is, she's taken these techniques that you're speaking of um, and she simplified it uh, into, into a way that I use my personal experiences to influence my characters so that um, anything I'm dealing with in life today um, will impact the way that my character acts. So um, on Vikings, for example, if I'm, if I'm trying to kill somebody and then there's a reason that, you know, there's a scene where um, my, my, mo my mother's killed by, by my brother in, on that show. And 
I used something very personal to me in that moment that was happening at that time. Right. And it brings out another another depth. Now that's not everybody's approach, and there's no right or way wrong to do right or wrong way to do it. In terms of method acting, I think people um, commonly mistake that for just being in character all the time, which actually isn't necessarily what what that is there's there, there, we can go into great depth of what method acting actually is but um for me that's that's what works best granted like i also love the idea of embodying a character and and living like the character if it calls for that uh in this specific film it didn't so um i'm using what i've what i've always used yeah you know. It's interesting because Stanislavski, Stella Adler, Lee Strasberg, mm -hmm. I studied at all. I was conser I conservat conservatory trained at Lee Strasberg and Stella Adler. Amazing. And the, the takeaway for me as an actor is you use it all. Yeah, exactly. You use it all. And, and the best a piece of advice that as an actor I give to my fellow actors is life experiences. It's all about living in the moment when you have those life experiences, becoming a parent, which brings me to my next question. Mm -hmm. Alexander, you have a baby girl yeah, now. Congratulations, yeah. you're you a so dad. Much. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. Oh, take that in, you're yeah, a dad. It's amazing, amazing. Yeah. How has now experiencing the birth of a, of a child that you brought into this world, you made that masterpiece, you are the master of her little world right now. You created her. How has that changed you when you are acting? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so it's crazy because it's, it doesn't feel like I made her, you know, like it's ironic because she came out looking like me and I'm like, my poor wife has, has to do all the work. And Have you seen the what my daughter on set looks like right now? <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah, I know. It's, it's on the net. Right. Uh, but um, it feels like she's just... It, you know, not to get too spiritual or anything, but she she really just feels like this gift from like out of just magic. It's yeah. like, where did you come from? Like, how did you know? It's like how like, it's it, crazy. Not nothing could have prepared you no. for being a father, right? No, no matter how not. many acting jobs you've had, but the emotional mm. availability you yeah. will have going forward yeah. when you need to tap into that emotion yeah. is just. The floodgates will open. And I have to be, to be completely candid, like, I thought I knew, like, I knew that my life was going to change. I knew I would feel a certain way, but I don't think I quite understood the depth. Like, I, I was just talking to Eve about this um, five minutes ago. I said, you know, the real difference when you have kids, at least for me, one of the, when people ask, like, what changed the most? It's the most random thing, but I, it, it was like, and not to get, I don't want to get too dark, but just whenever I hear about another kid suffering, like it hits so different now. Yep. And I, in the best way though, I would also say that it, it undoubtedly makes your life better and you're a happier person because of it. It also just simplifies everything. You realize what's actually important in life, you know? Yeah. And um, it's been the greatest gift in the world. And this is the best day, best day of my life was the day she was born and it always will be. Um, and it definitely will affect my characters going forward. You guys are listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. That was the incredible Alexander Ludwig. We're on set of Killing Castro. That's Eve Rivera's film set, Romulus Productions. Thank you so much. We'll be right back after this. A moment of Zen is brought to you by Your Home TV with Kathy Ireland and their channel partners. Head to yourhometv.com for free, family friendly programming, streaming 24 7. Are you looking to build a new home? Think about building a barn dominium. There's just something about getting away from it all. Country living, fresh air, and outdoor entertainment. Watch luxury barn dominium tours on your home TV and let Stacy Lynn, the barn dominium lady, take you on a journey through her barn dominium designs. Tune in to A Moment of Zen, Saturday nights from 9 to 10 p.m. on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. Well, that's a wrap, my dear friends. Remember to join me right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, every Saturday night from 9 to 10 p.m. Or you could head to 710wor.iheart.com forward slash a moment of zen. Also remember that we're live on Traverse TV Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern, YouTube Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern, and all episodes of A Moment of Zen are available on your home TV and Kathy Ireland worldwide platform 
you can head directly to our channel at mox.yourhometv.com where we stream 24 7. Thank you for listening to A Moment of Zen. It's been an absolute pleasure being your host. Thanks again to all of our sponsors that continue to make the show possible. And remember that happiness is the only thing that multiplies when you share it.